students, this is my last installment of this series of lectures on an introduction to chemistry of life, organic and biochemistries. Whew. In this one, I'm going to teach you guys something that you've always wondered. Maybe. I hope so, because ready or not, we're going to go ahead and get started. Now, nucleic acids, DNA and RNA, are huge molecules made of individual building blocks called nucleotides. A nucleotide is a smaller molecule that has three different components. A five carbon sugar, put in this cute little blue square, a phosphate unit, shown over here, and a nucleotide base shown up here. So the only major difference between RNA and DNA is that in RNA, the sugar unit has an OH right here at this position, while in DNA it has a hydrogen. Hence the D in DNA stands for deoxyribo, whereas in RNA it's just ribo. So you take away the oxy at this position, you have DNA, you leave the oxy or the OH group here, you have RNA. Got it? Okay, let's go on then. So there are five nucleotide bases found in nature. These five nucleotide bases are adenine, guanine, cytosine, thiamine, and uracil all pictured right here. Now adenine, guanine, cytosine, and thiamine are all found in DNA, while uracil is used in the place of thiamine and RNA. These four nucleotide bases are typically abbreviated as A, G, C, T, and U, respectively. Now as this figure shows, in two DNA strands, G pairs with C, while A pairs with T. In RNA, U takes the place of T. The sugar and phosphate units stuck to each nucleotide base, which I showed you two slides ago, make up something called the sugar phosphate backbone, which is depicted here using this cute little winding blue ribbon. <laughs> so this figure is supposed to be a zoomed in shot of the four base long segment of a single DNA strand. It shows how the sugar phosphate backbone looks more closely with each nucleotide base being shown up here in this cute little green box as a repeating unit in the strand. So this is once again the sugar phosphate backbone that was depicted as a ribbon in the previous slide. So you might wonder then, how does G pair with C and A pair with T or A pair with U and RNA? The reason that happens is all because of hydrogen bonding as we can see in this figure. You can see for instance that T, thiamine, hydrogen bonds in a complementary way to the adenine right here where I've got these nitrogen groups. Similarly, cytosine or C, hydrogen bonds in a shapely complementary fashion with guanine shown here. You should note, by the way, that cytosine and guanine have three hydrogen bonds between them, while as adenine and thymine only have two. Hence, when you have DNA that is rich in CG pairs, it tends to actually take more energy to break it apart than DNA that doesn't have as high of a CG ratio. Okay, that was an aside. Now, when I was a young up-and-coming science student in ninth grade, I remember distinctly learning that chromosomes contained the information that passed on our genetic traits. Separately, I remember learning that DNA was the nucleic acid that was also responsible for carrying our uh, genetic traits. However, back in high school, I never really had any teacher make the connection between DNA and chromosome. So I wondered, are chromosomes made of DNA or is chromosome the same thing as DNA? What's the connection between the two? Well, please rest assured, just because I don't want you, my students, to be confused by the same thing, I'm going to show you right now by continuing to zoom out and out and out from DNA until we see it turn into a chromosome. Let's go ahead and begin then. So if I look at two complementary strands of DNA, you'll notice that I've got the sugar phosphate repeating backbone right here on one strand and the same of another strand over here. You'll also notice that I've got right here an A pairing with a T and right here I've got a G pairing with a C. Now, if I were to zoom out of this, you could uh, picture these as looking a little bit further away like this. Now, granted, this is a little bit ridiculous because I've added some other nucleotide bases in between. Please forgive me for that. The point is, I'm trying to show that the strand that you see to the right is a zoomed out version of what we see it to the left. Let's go ahead and take this strand then and keep it right here on our slide. So here's this strand that we've zoomed out from a little bit. Now, as it turns out, if you zoom out from this strand a little bit further, it looks like this, where the uh, sugar phosphate backbone is depicted here by a cute little pink ribbon, and all of the complementary nucleotide bases are shown here as cute little triangular-ish shapes. So this is zoomed out a little bit more. Now it turns out that in order to package these ribbons of DNA into the nucleus of a cell, we have to wrap them around something called a histone. Histones here look like little spheres. 
Histones, if you think about it, are a little bit like this kind of structure that we use to wrap our garden hose around in front of our house. So if any of you guys have a garden hose and you've seen it get wrapped around something that looks kind of like this, a, a hose wrap storage unit, hose wrap storage unit is kind of, for a garden hose, what a histone is for DNA. So DNA gets wrapped around a histone. Then if you get a bunch of histones all clustered together, like a little grape cluster here, it looks like this, and we call these nucleosomes. Now, when you get a bunch of nucleosomes all clustered together and have them wound around and around and around each other, they end up looking like this, and this structure is called chromatin fiber. Now, I want you to keep that in your mind as we go to the next slide. Here is our chromatin fiber. As it turns out, if you zoom out even more, chromatin fiber looks a little bit like this tiny little string. And then when this tiny little string is put together, and really, really long length and a very, very specific structure. What do you have? Well, ding, 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 you totally have this structure, which you guessed is a chromosome. So is a chromosome comprised of DNA? The answer is absolutely yes. Now I'm going to post a link here that you can click on that will take you to this HTML address, which is a separate YouTube video from the DNA Learning Center, which makes beautiful animation videos. I hope that all of you will click this link and watch this video. For you, my students who are taking this class from me, I require you to. I want you to watch it because it shows you very clearly in a beautifully animated way how DNA is used to uh, make the, up the structure of chromosomes. Furthermore, I want you to look at it and just marvel at how beautiful biochemistry is at the microscopic level. That takes us to the end of this video and the end of all of our videos for Chapter 24's coverage on the chemistry of life. Until later chapter, students, I hope it's been fun for you. I want you to continue studying hard, learning science, loving chemistry, and most importantly, having an enjoyable rest of your day. Until next time, students, take care.